Hello and welcome to Improve Your Voice. My name's Darren McStay and today I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about resonance. Now there's a lot of myths surrounding the idea of resonance and actually there's, there's different ways to resonate and not only physically but we can resonate with people on a topic or an idea and share the same opinions and that is another way of resonating. But I'm specifically today talking about how resonance is created in the body in order to give you a physical actual understanding of the science behind what is going on when we create vibrations and speak or sing. Now I've, I've, been, I've been doing some research and going through some really heavy books. This one here, A Vocal Health and Pedagogy Science Assessment and Treatment, which uh, it's going to take me a while to get through to be fair. And this one, Anatomy of the Moving Body. All of these have come recommended by, by other voice coaches and people who are interested in um, in, in the voice. And this one's a great one, which uh, was recommended by one of my voice coaches, The Anatomy Coloring Book. And that's got some great pictures in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a couple of little um, images of this as we go through the video. But look, essentially, if you want to have a voice that connects and travels and meets other people in a way that is natural and relaxed, but also kind of full, rich, rounded and 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 for want of a better term, resonates with people. And some people might consider this as a deep voice. And I covered how to get a deep voice in under an hour yesterday in my video, but you can go and check that out if you like. So let's look what happens. Let's imagine we've breathed in air, okay? And now we want to create sound or we're gonna speak or sing. What happens is the air gets sent up through what's, what's called the trachea. Now this is a tube that links our lungs through to the passageway that comes out of our mouth. And this trachea meets what's known as the larynx. Now the larynx has bone, cartilage, a muscle, all kind of protecting or housing, if you like, the, what's known as the vocal folds, previously known as cords. These are tiny little muscles. And what happens with these muscles is air, as it meets, the muscles kind of move up and round it and attach in different ways. But let's, as a simplified version, just to give you an understanding of how they move, if air comes up through the trachea, it opens from the bottom and then opens up like that. And it releases, that releases a sound as it, as it opens up, if they're kind of pushed together, if there's like, um, if there's some, if you're not just, breathing, huh, huh. if you put them together, that's what, you know, what happens. So the air comes up like this, releases, and it comes back down meeting at this point here. Okay, so this movement here is what happens extremely fast and creates sound. So the faster you go, generally, you know, you'd hear more vibrations creates usually a higher note, but that's not the only way high notes are created, it, it changes. These vocal folds can move in different ways, you see, they could be more relaxed, more tense, and they can also be lengthened. For example, if I go into a falsetto note, uh, they're actually getting longer, and that's, that's how you create that sound. So that's essentially from the, from the lungs, through the trachea, up through the vocal folds, but then we get into the first resonator, which is in, in you could argue, the only resonator, but it changes shape. Now this is another tube. So this tube comes up from where the larynx is, and it's called the pharynx, or the pharyngeal resonator. And what happens with this resonator, we call it a resonator because this is the first point that captures sound after it's been created. And so it's a tube, another tube, and resonator because it, it, it resonates. You know, the sound that's created bounces around in that area. This then moves into the nasopharynx and the oropharynx. Now, the nasopharynx is the nasal cavity and that's, it's like an extension of this tube up into the nose, behind the nose, and it's just a kind of empty space. And so more sound can get passed through there and vibrate as well and, and you know, exit out of your nose. But also the oropharynx is the mouth. So the mouth also connects here. So there's an area at the back, just above where that dangly thing is, uh, at the back there, um, which is like soft, and it's called the soft palate that moves into the hard palate, and that's what separates the nasopharynx from the oropharynx. And so this one tube then becomes another two. And if we uh, manipulate uh, 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 a jaw, we can move and change the shape of the, the oropharynx or the mouth even. And obviously with the nose, there's 
things we can do and moving the soft palate and the tongue up at the back um, restrict the air that comes through the mouth in order to create sound that goes more through our nose. And so all of these areas are able to be manipulated and changed and moved and stretched and shrunk and they could be tight, they can be limber. And when we talk about resonance, that is essentially what it is. People talk about chest resonance and belly resonance and head resonance, but really the only chambers that capture resonance or, or kind of create that are those, are those three. Well, really one that extends into another two. But because of the imagery that we can associate with resonance and how how to safely and securely like uh, consider lower resonances, we think of the belly and we use it as, a, as an imaginary tool to, to help us to consider lower notes, for example, and maybe even our head and out above our heads and, and to our neck and our shoulders and all these places that we consider sending air to to create different resonances. But this is basically where the action happens. That's where it's all going on, from the voice box right up to the to your lips. Of course, as I'm speaking, if I make a note and I, I change the shape of my lips, there's so much that can be changed and manipulated that in order to resonate well, we really want these spaces and areas to be limber, malleable and able to expand and contract at will, but we don't want to hold that. So these are things that we can exercise and if you really want to get more resonance, okay, and I, I'll say this, I've said it a thousand times <laughs> on this channel, I'll say it again, if you want more resonance and be able to control and manipulate and get more dynamics, one of the best things you can do is practice yawning with your, with your, with your mouth closed at the front or at least open just this amount and yawning and feeling the spaces widen and contract. So just kind of just work them, pulsate them. Now you can consider having just your mouth moving up. You can feel the soft palate. You can feel things moving around and you can feel the back of your jaw going down. You can feel the larynx moving and you can feel this pharyngeal area that, that can also sort of expand and contract and the areas up the back they can move and expand and contract. So by doing that and exercising just a little bit every day, just a couple of minutes, you'll actually start to train those muscles to become a little bit stronger and a bit more flexible and more elastic. So then when you want to uh, use your voice, you don't have to consider trying to sound bigger or more resonant. It kind of just, the muscles have been working for you. So, so they'll work. It's almost like going to the gym and like working on your leg muscles and strengthening them and then lengthening them as well and, and making sure that you're not only strong but mobile. So when you go for a run, you can sort of run faster, you can run longer and it becomes easier. So just running itself is not going to do that. So just singing or just speaking is not going to make you more resonant, but by training some of these muscles, it will. So yawning is a great one to do. And you know, I haven't said this in a while, but when I created my eight week course, it was all about like understanding the body in, in, a, in a way that is, 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 is gonna be beneficial to creating more relaxed, resonant, uh, um, lower natural toned voices. And so if you're someone who really wants to study and really wants to develop their voice through exercises in a set period of time, and then continue to work on your voice and maintain it from then on, then really check out the eight week course because there's a lot on there. There's over 65 exercises all aimed at building up your body to be the best instrument it can be in order to, to, to work as a voice. And once you've got that, once you've done that exercise, you no longer really have to um, consider how you're using your voice you know, like the function of it, because it will be there working for you and it will be in its right place. So that's my little take on resonance. You can always find more on my website, uh, vocabilities.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, why not get involved? Stick around. And I'd love to hear your comments because this is the first type of video I've done really on anatomy and physiology and it's something that because I'm going back to do more training that I'm studying more of and I want to sort of talk to you talk you through my journey so as I'm remembering things that I learned you know years ago and and writing it down and being more specific about the actual production of voice I want to share it with you so if you're on board if you're interested then leave a comment ask questions and I'll, I'll be happy to answer them and stay involved I'm, I've not gone back to university yet I'm hoping to do that at the end of this year I haven't even had my interview yet it will be in a couple of weeks so I'm still with you for a while at least through the summer and or at least until the baby comes which is very soon and then well 
be uh, quite busy. All right, thanks very much. I'm Darren McStay. This is Improve Your Voice, and until the next time, look after your voice. <laughs>